ended up taking a wool class. It's a Sue Spargo class, and you need a place to have all your little needles. I purchased all her needles, and I didn't had them in the tubes, just like everyone else. And I also purchased her book. I went to the San Antonio quilt show several years ago. So the book and these needles have been in a drawer for years. Finally decided to take a class. Thank God. So I'm gonna take these out of their containers and I'm going to make a needle holder. I should just call it a needle holder thingamajig. Before I took the class, I didn't know that her needles coincided with her thread. So this green goes with this thread. She also has several other needles that work with this thread. And she also has like a blue and a purple end that work with these needles, right? I didn't know that, so when I made my needle holder, I embroidered them all the same color. You don't have to have an embroidery machine and embroider this. You can literally write on a Sharpie on a piece of fabric, or she does have labels for like three or four dollars that you could sew the labels on your fabric. I also wanted to share that this is not Sue Spargo specific. You can make your own needle roller specific to the needles that you use if you are a hand quilter, a binder, if you're an applicator and you have a whole set of needles, you can make one of this to coincide with your craft that you use. So this is what mine looks like and like I said, I just embroidered them the all the same color and also too, I put crystals to let me know that like this one goes with whatever thread I have to kind of help me organize it. Like I said, I did make some for my friends that I did change the thread type. This was my first one, so you can see like it's all wonky, it's out of shape, but it's really easy to make and um, it didn't take long to make it and that's what we're gonna do today, okay? For a friend of mine, the materials you're going to need is wool or regular fabric, it doesn't matter. I recommend batting and an outside material. I did use old binding that I made from a while back. This is a good way to use your scraps. And uh, some elastic and a button. This is 15 by 9 wide. This is totally different. This is my second run. I'm doing this for a friend. And so you're going to need a piece of wool or fabric, however you want to do it, you don't need to use wool. Since I'm doing a wool class, I use wool. Uh, a piece of batting and also an outside layer. And you're also going to need some elastic ribbon, whatever buttons you want to use will work. Any scrap binding that you have will also work. Also keep in mind that when you're embroidering wool, you do need a water soluble stabilizer on top so that when it embroiders, the thread has a layer to lay on top of. This little plastic stuff will uh, dissipate when you put water. You're gonna go ahead and have your three layers on top of each other and I'm going to get a ruler and a marking tool. I'm just marking like an inch apart. You don't need to do a massive amount of quilting to do this. So this is what this looks like and this is the wool. I'm going to trim all this area off and then I'm going to put binding on it. So this is the binding that I want to use to put on here. Now when you're putting binding on this, I recommend that you start on a bottom or top edge. My ribbon, now you can fold your fabric to know where the center is. I'm gonna pin it here so it doesn't shift on me when I'm putting the binding. And then make do a triangle like this and then fold on the line and then just keep going nice and down. So I have um, 
my thread of binding needle and I ironed everything so I removed all the marking tools and I'm just going to be hand binding. I think hand binding looks the prettiest and the cleanest. So this is with the binding, nice and pretty. Look how beautiful that is. And we iron it nice and pretty. So this is the finished product. You can see that the water soluble has dissolved. And I also put a sweet little button here. So when you roll it, it just grabs onto here. So her needles coordinate with certain colors. For example, this thread would go with this needle and these needles. But I embroidered to color coordinate the the needles. Let me show you here. Twenty-four tapestry. Tapestry needle eighteen. I was trying to coordinate the color. This project literally takes less than 30 minutes to do and it really, when I took the class, it really did help me keep my needles in one place and not have them everywhere. It uh, really has helped me organize everything a bit. I also think I'm going to make one for my applique needles, my binding needles, and all other needle work, hand work that I do. So I really do hope you like this video. Please consider subscribing to this channel and to Lorena's Lasers. I made some stuff that kind of like, well, anyway, just consider, okay? I would really appreciate it. I thank you for, for the love of watching these videos and for the time that you took. And I thank you for supporting our channel. All right, so I'll see you later. That her needles, these, I'm gonna have to go find that.